Welcome back, everybody. We are still undead werewolf detective Luton in pursuit of the counterweight killer, the bestial attacker who presumably has the one who killed us in addition to at least killing or being present at the deaths of Mundy, Reagan, and Malachite. Uh, last time we found some moss at the site of our own killing, where our body was, and we decided we were going to go to the Von Überwald mansion to follow up on that. The Count being an expert in botany, and them having a fairly generous observatory that we could have pried to see if we could have got anything from. But before we do that, I really feel like we should do some due diligence. We know about three new murders of a patrician's clerk, of a wizard, and of a, a merchant of some kind. And we found about them from Nobby, so I feel like we might go and pump him for a bit more information. I'd like to go to the mansion prepared. Seems Back like that's enough. Desk, I see. Uh, hello, Luton. Seems like that's enough of a hub that we should really know what we're talking about before we go there. There's not much new to ask Nobby about except for the uh, counterweight killings and the three murders we just found out about. So let's see if he'll drop any hints. Uh, you know, he's not really supposed to talk to us, but Nobby isn't that hard to get talking, so maybe we can get him to drop something interesting. Since I'm no longer a suspect, would you like to tell me something about the counterweight killings? Sorry, Luton still can't discuss it. Oh, of course. Well, maybe we can trip him up. Let's ask him in particular about the different You mentioned murders. the murder of one of the patrician's clerks before. Yeah. What can you tell me about that? That he's dead. Uh-huh. That's all your in-depth inquiries turned up? Not as easy as that, you know. Making sure someone's really dead. He might have just been playing dead. Anyway, he was killed in the palace. You must know more than that. Or is it that you can't tell me about it? If you want to know more, you'll have to find out yourself. Sorry. Never would have guessed it, Nobby. Well, that's a tiny piece of information anyway. We know that the killing actually happened in the palace. So if we were able to get in there somehow, that might, uh, might help us investigate the murder scene. How about the wizard? What can you tell me about the murder at Unseen University? Nothing. Nothing? The university isn't being cooperative. Old Voims is saying that because it's murder, it's our jurisdiction. But they're arguing that they can handle their own affairs. It's all got political. That doesn't help the inquiry much, does it? Well, that's really inconvenient, but certainly not anything like unexpected. The uh, wizards are fairly cagey and keep to their own. What about this merchant that you said was murdered? I can't discuss that with you. Well, you must be able to tell me something. The guilds like to keep these disputes to themselves. You know what I mean? You'll have to talk to the Merchants Guild. Well, that is something again. We now know that it's in particular the Merchants Guild where the merchant was murdered. He was apparently a guild member, not just a, a wealthy merchant. I don't think we have anything in our inventory in particular that Nobby would know about. So we've got a location now. I found you know, this envelope, and I think it might be important. Only it's empty. It's empty. Why would anyone put an empty envelope in a safe place? Maybe they were bluffing. What do you mean? Could have been a blackmailer's envelope. An empty blackmail envelope? Well, this is just an idea. But if someone thought you knew something and you convinced them it was in the envelope, you could use it to bluff. Nobby. It's a stupid idea, isn't it? Forget I mentioned it. No, it's a good idea. I just can't believe you thought of it. Hey, I'm not as dumb as I look. You could only be as dumb as you look, Nobby, if you were a very good actor. So that's a really good idea from a pretty unexpected source. It could be that there is no secret to the envelope, but it was just, it. uh... Let's face it, Nobby was no oil painting. Unless someone did it with their foot. That it was just kind of kept around to try to get leverage over somebody. That certainly would be an interesting twist on things. You know, I noticed at this point that there was something that I forgot to pick up in the last update, and because of that, I forgot to have it when I was talking to Nobby. If we go back to Rodan's workshop, where Malachite was, we can find these plaster encrusted bandages. Now, if we examine them in our inventory. I found the plaster encrusted bandages on the floor of Rodan's workshop. Apart from the fact that they'd been soaked in plaster and left to dry, 
There didn't seem to be anything unusual about them. That's pretty much all we get. Nothing too enlightening. But uh, it could be that since this is uh, an area uh, of... Well, we know that there's a lot of crime just involved. Like... Just skip through this oh, intro sequence me. here. If there was anything shady going on with Rodan, Nami Do these mean anything idea. to you? Well, it could be the work of a plaster surgeon. A plaster surgeon? Yeah. They're cosmetic surgeons for trolls. Some trolls on the run wants to change his face. Well, he goes to a plaster surgeon. The watch would like to get their hands on any plaster surgeons working in Angmore Park, I can tell you. Don't you want to know where I got them? Ah, uh, they're just some plaster soaked bandages. Why would I be interested? Nobby, do you ever actually do any detective work? Well, I'm only a corporal. I'm beginning to understand how detritus got to be sergeant. Well, that's very interesting. We know that there are at least two uh, trolls still alive. I guess we're assuming Malachite's dead and truly dead. Presumably the watch was at least that thorough, although in this universe I guess we can't be sure. Malachite and Sapphire. Uh, now, we also didn't check the notice board here, so maybe it's got something Wanted. new. Bed maker and laundry man for Unseen University. Two dollars for each day survived. Contact Mrs. Foams at the new hall. That is a good find, because we want to get in and see what happened at Unseen University. So we will definitely have to remember that they want a new person as a bed maker. And what else we got? The, uh, the old notice board. The story of the Sortean War, as it was ne'er told, Truculus and Cresselic, Huel's epic incomprehensible masterwork, Death, War, Romance songs. I see more thespianism. Wanted by the watch in connection with the sale of genuine authentic soggy mountain dew, one CMOT dibbler of no fixed abode. If you see this man, consider him stocked up and extremely persistent. <laughs> you could probably figure out on your own that the dibbler was fairly persistent there. So it's hard to tell about the trolls what? Sapphire made of. Bed maker and and nothing new there. Sapphire made of may might have made a run for it and changed her face, or. Uh... Uh, Jasper Horst as well. My usual, please. Loot, Luton. Your <laughs> what? Is my tie not done up straight? Is there an unfortunate mark on my nose? I heard you were dead. Perhaps I am. Get me a stiff drink. How about a whiskey? Don't you want something with it? All right, put another whiskey in there. Drinking like that'll kill you. I'm dead already. You didn't come back here to drink, did you? Oh, Luton really likes making Mank and Squirm any way he can, so that little surprise, you knew he was just relishing that. How's business been? Poor. Sapphire's missed several days. I don't think she's coming back. You could be right. So this is the small talk to win me over before you start grilling me again, is it? You may be onto something there. I hope you know you're not making any friends here. Well, doesn't sound like Mangan knew about Sapphire's plans, or at least that he's suffering from them. Uh, so he's presumably not in on it, although he is sort of a known liar, so I guess we can't really trust anything. I hear there's a job going for a bedmaker and laundry man up at Unseen University. Oh yeah, there's always a job going for a bedmaker and laundry man up there. That has to be the worst job imaginable. I can imagine worse, but that doesn't fill me with confidence. <laughs> so I guess he knows people at the Unseen University. That's interesting. You should ask him more about the... Uh... About the wizard's death, he also doesn't seem to think working there would be any picnic. It's probably dangerous, honestly. Uh, I mean, the fact that they need a new one means it's either a bad job or you a dangerous one. You wouldn't happen to have heard anything about the murder of one of the patrician's clerks, would you? No one outside of the palace knows anything. Uh, except the commander of the watch. I heard that the patrician has asked Commander Vimes to come and speak to him about it sometime soon. Hadn't he already gone to see him? Hey, what do I know? I'm just a bartender with big ears. Perhaps he just wants an update on the case. Whatever. Well, that's interesting. It sounds like there hasn't been a lot of talk between Vimes and the Patrician, which is sort of surprising. Apparently one of the wizards up at Unseen University got themselves killed. That's right. The reader of Esoteric Accounting or something. Esoteric Occultism, yeah. How did you know that? I was speaking to Mrs. Forms earlier. Mrs. Fox. Mm. She's the head chambermaid up at the new hall. One of the halls of residence? Yeah, the big one that runs off from the huge library. What did she have to say? Just that this wizard had died in mysterious circumstances. Although she sounded like mysterious circumstances are pretty normal up there. It'd be a nice change if someone died <laughs> in unmysterious circumstances for a change. 
Can't be easy working at the university. You couldn't pay me enough to make me work there. Oh no? No amount of money would make you work there. Well, obviously not a huge amount. For enough money I'd do anything. Anything. Make it. Not involving fish, broccoli, or vinegar. Actually, fish, broccoli, and vinegar sounds like a decent meal to me, so I don't know what he's so upset about. I guess elves are fussy, or half-elves or something. So... I hear a prominent merchant has been killed. Heard anything about it? All I heard was that someone in the merchant's guild got killed. That's all I know. It's a bit on uh, this would have given us the location of the merchant's guild if we hadn't got it from Navi earlier. Anyway, it's a bit unfortunate for us yeah, that the three probably tightest-lipped organizations in the entire city of Ankh, the university, the palace, and the guilds are where the latest murders were. So we have the Merchant's Guild available to us now, and the New Hall at Unseen University. We're going to be investigating all these, but let's check out Unseen University. It's a pretty impressive intro cutscene there. It's a... Unseen Mystical University place. was positioned along a large stretch in the River Ankh, and its campus was convoluted enough that it was hard to tell where the university ended and the city began. It would be wrong to say that the people of the city respected the wizards of the university, and it would be wrong to say that they hated them. In fact, all you could really say was that both the citizens and the wizards were glad of the wall that stopped them from having to socialize on a daily basis. Unseen University is kind of just like a, a big university in a college town like that. Mrs. Foams? Yes, I am she. What do you want? May I come in? No, you may not. <laughs> I've come about the job. Hmm, is that a fact? Very well, you may enter. But wipe your feet. I won't have the help messing up the carpets. You can figure out kind of in a hurry what kind of person this uh, head chambermaid is. Doesn't much like the help, doesn't now, value you too you've much. come for the job, Mr... Luton. And yes, I am interested in the job. Well, as the head chambermaid, the decisions about hiring staff falls on my shoulders. Do you have any experience? No, but I'm a fast learner. Well, the pay is two dollars a day. There are no perks. If you want it, it's yours. Well, I think we'll probably take it and not do it. But let's see if we can pump any information out of her. Tell me about Unseen University. It's not the business of help to discuss their employers. Probably not. That was pretty short and to the point. Mm, I guess we can ask her about the killings. Do you know anything about the counterweight killings? Murders are hardly a suitable topic for polite conversation. Too true, too true. Well, specifically the wizard murder. Is it dangerous working here? Only I heard that one of the wizards was murdered. Don't let that bother you, Mr. Luton. The affairs of the staff are not our concern. You don't think I'm in any danger? Goodness, no. The odd death is just the natural course of campus politics, I'm afraid. It's a shocking turn of affairs, but we mustn't question it. Hmm. Dead men's pointy boots and all that. Dead men's pointy boots. Well, apparently they take... Uh... Now, do you want the job or not? Apparently they take deaths pretty much in stride here at Unseen University. So let's find out Dead what she meant by that. pointy boots? Yes. No questions asked as to the manner of their emptying, if you know what I mean. Hmm. I see. I see. So apparently that means if uh, people die, you don't look into it too much. And... The jewel wasn't the kind of thing I wanted to discuss with just anyone. Figured it was worth a try. Well, let's I'll take, take the, job. the job. When do I start? You can start now by making the beds. The dorm is through that door. I advise you to leave before the students get back. Why? Boys will be boys, Mr. Luton. And apprentice wizards are the worst kind of boys imaginable. Alright. Um, let's see if there's anything else we might even ask her. So apparently, uh, you don't really investigate too much. Do you much. know anything about some kind of beast stalking the streets? I have better things to be doing than talking to you, you know. That's just a generic no answer there. I not sure what I she does do. Work. Very good. All right. Oh, can we go in her room? Mrs. Forms? No. Well, what do you want? I haven't got time to waste talking to you, you know. Right, right. She just comes out and says hi to me. I okay. guess I'd better get to work. Indeed you should. The lair of the redoubtable Mrs. Foams, the head chambermaid. 
so it's hard to tell if this wizard death is not just part of the normal course of affairs. Can we uh, smell here? Mrs. Foams yeah. could probably see me from there. We'll have to do a little digging and find that it actually is related to our killer. It'd be nice if we know where it happened so we could get the scent. Let's see what we have in the dorms. We're obviously not going to be actually doing the, the work. The Octarine board appeared blank to my eyes, but I had a feeling there was something written on it I couldn't see. A few sticks of chalk, a type of chalk made from Octarine carbonate, were resting on the top of the board. Octarine is a different color. It's sort of the color of magic, as is the title of the first book in the Discworld series. And if I remember correctly, as a the wolf... The dorm was full of the jangling sense of the students. But the most surprising thing was the Octarin board. As a wolf, I smelt the words on the board. The chalk marks showed up as sparkling traces against the odorless board. It seemed to be a list of subjects the young apprentices were studying. Occult perils of lace making, basic myth and monsters, principles of thormic imponderability, and temples of the great Nev. Under the list of subjects were the words you must read a chapter on each before the next lecture. Well, none of those seem of particular interest to us at the moment. Um, I guess it was my job to make the beds. Watch how fast I go. <laughs> we do not go fast. What if, can we make the beds? For a brief moment, I considered actually making the beds. Fortunately, good sense prevailed. No, good. Man, this dorm uh, structure is not what The I... students had their very own unlockers to keep their possessions in. This sturdy-looking unlocker seemed in better condition than the others. Hmm. Not what I'm used to. The well, let's see if we can... The only interesting thing I could find in the unlocker was some books. Okay. I guess the rumors about the students weren't true. They did do some studying. Well, presumably we'll be able to use that to our advantage at some point. Hmm. What have we got? Occult Primer, Monster Fun Grimoire, Fulamith, The Theory of Thormic Imponderability, Lost Temples of the Great Nev? Yeah, let's just see. Anyway, uh, yeah, this communal style dorm room sounds like a nightmare. Especially with wizards, that would be Even terrible. Even as a human, I could smell something very disturbing coming from this particular unlocker. I probably don't want to find out what it is. Can we? Given the smell of the unlocker, I was grateful it was locked. No, I think only this one here in the end is unlocked, that we can look at the books in it. Well, anyway, that seems to be all we can do in here for now. Let's see if we can find out uh, anything else. Looks like a little hallway. wonder if we can get the scent of somebody. Maybe a werewolf up. Not in front of the porter. I'd definitely get thrown out. Oh, there's a porter around somewhere. Alright. Well, that could be somebody to talk to. Maybe somebody who's not uh, not our employer would be a little happier to talk about the recent string of deaths here. The Porters are part of the Discworld series. They're known as to be sort of fearsome guys who look after the wizards, the student wizards. You don't want to mess with them. What are you doing here? The name's Luton. I'm working for Mrs. Foams. Uh, you're the new bedmaker, eh? Well, you can't come any further than this, Luton. Wizards only in the library, thank you. Wizards only. Well, wizards, Metal Gear. Uh, apprentices, and uh, orangutans. Are you a porter? No. I'm a bledlow. And there's a difference, alright? Yes, excuse me, the bledlows being the ones who look after the students in particular. They are uh, very dedicated and very fearsome, which you'd have What's to be. What's a bledlow? We look after the students. Look after them? Just like the watch looks after the city. You throw your weight around and beat them senseless when they do something wrong? Hmm, that's about the size of it, yeah. You don't mess with the lobsters. Lobsters? Just a nickname we've picked up over the years. Why? If you see us get our hands on a uh, student, you'll understand. You make it sound like you're hunting them down. Of course. All students are guilty of everything. <laughs> It's a decent enough model. Check out that cool observatory out the window over there, too. Where are all the students? They're off playing Unseen University Challenge uh, against the students from the, uh, from the Assassin's Guild. What does that involve? I don't know. 
given the way most sports are conducted round here, it probably involves a very careful inspection of after pubs in Angmore Park. What makes you say that? Heard of the city and guilds? No. When the guilds started setting up their own colleges, there was a lot of rivalry between the various students. Rivalry? Well, the uh, university students used to be ambushed by mm. gangs from the guilds, really. Used to be? Well, given the faculty's relaxed attitude to uh, sudden death, most of the staff preferred dead students on account of them being easier to uh, <coughs> teach. But I gather the guilds decided that enough was enough because all the bodies around the place made it very hard to open doors. So what did they do? They founded the City and Guilds Match. See, the idea was to carry a football right from the outskirts of the shades to the Tower of Art. Goals being scored by kicking the ball through the door of certain landmarks. What sort of landmarks? The sort with names like the Mended Drum and the Bunch of Grapes. The scoring team was bought drinks by the other teams, you see. And after a few years, the Arts Chancellor ruled that only one goal could be scored in each pub since the match had, for three years running, had gone on for a month. What's this got to do with Unseen University Challenge? Well, the University tends to leave the City and Guilds match to the Guilds. They prefer a more cerebral challenge. Such as going straight to the pub, not passing go and not bothering to come back? That'd be my guess, yes. So they're not coming back? Well, they'll be back. They need to come to the library to get their course books. So they're off drinking, but they'll be back for the library eventually. I think that means we won't be seeing them in the game, basically. Do you know anything about the counterweight killings? It's not me place to discuss murders, Luton. <laughs> Maybe if we asked more specifically about the wizard murder. I hear the reader of esoteric occultism was murdered. Yep. Old Matham was so full of poison, even the worms wouldn't touch him. He was poisoned? That's right. Right here in the Widdishin's wing of the university. You don't sound concerned. I just keep an eye on the students. The wizards can do what they like to each other. Mm hmm. Well, that gave us a good piece of information. His name was Metham, and he was poisoned. Poisoned pretty badly, apparently. Who do you think killed Metham? Well, that shouldn't be hard to work out, eh? Just see who fills his shoes. You think it was an internal matter? I don't see why not. No one else has got a reason to be killing wizards, have they, hey? Eh? Well, that's a good point. I mean, this all seems to be regarded pretty much as a matter-of-fact day-to-day business. Have you heard the expression, dead men's pointy boots? Of course. What does it mean? Well, towards the upper levels of magic, where the number of positions get few and far between, Wizards advance primarily by the untimely death of their bosses. And the pointy boots? Well, the point is, no questions are asked as to the uh, <clears throat> emptying yeah, of those uh, pointy boots. Yes, I see. Well, so that it certainly wouldn't be out of character. Well, I'd better leave you to it. For a... Uh, Wizard to be murdered, of course, with all, everything else that's going on in the city lately. I don't think we can completely write this off as a coincidence. But it's interesting that, uh, apparently university politics are so deadly that this wouldn't even raise a, uh, raise a stink. I think a lot of what goes on in here, the communal dorms, the blood lows, things like that, the, the games with the townies, this is probably reminiscent of larger universities in Europe, I'm guessing, or England, and back in later than Middle Ages, I guess. Anyway, certainly not, uh, besides the drinking, what goes on over here in the States. In this uh, save, I had to go back, and I had not actually gone through this initial conversation with the guards, just to show that it's not important. Um, but I skipped through that in a hurry. So let's see if they'll tell us anything about the palace killing.
Might as well find out about the patrician's clerk. I hear one of the clerks got murdered. Ask questions like that and we might have to arrest you. On what grounds? Well, on the palace grounds, obviously. Yeah, we walked into that one, all right. Well, so they're going to be fairly close-lipped. Have you heard about the recent murder of a rich merchant? We don't know nothing about any murders, all right? Mm, I got it, I got it. We'll have to do a bit of our own investigation. Thanks for the chat. Our pleasure. And if we can't talk to people, pretty much the only thing else we have left available to us is uh, werewolving. So now that we're out of sight, maybe we can find some clue. Well, I recognize that color. One that of the empty tree. barrels had a faint magenta trace to it. Let's just match it up with uh, the scent we have of the serial killer, just to make absolutely sure. And I think we found out how they got in. Definitely the same scent as my killer. Which meant whoever it was made it into the palace concealed in a wine barrel. Why did that bring to mind the phrase, You wait, time passes. And Thorin sits down and starts singing about gold. If you're unfamiliar with this reference, I would suggest that you just post something asking Ms. Bundefund about it, because I have a, uh, a suspicion that he would know a little bit about that. That's a game he is quite familiar with. It's a th see that is a well done video game reference. Not so much the uh, Laura Croft thing from earlier, but we won't speak of that. So if you have uh, the instincts of a palace guard and you found that out, you would have thought, boy, I better tell somebody. If you have the instincts of loot and a private investigator, you found out how the murderer got into the palace and thought, I wonder if I could get in the same way. There's still some wine barrels left here, and for all we know, the golem's still going to load them in. And sure enough... I had a long wait, but it paid off. The golem grabbed us, put us right into the palace. Easy as pie. He's right, it doesn't say too much for their security. I mean, surely the wine a... barrels had allowed me to break into the palace. It didn't speak too highly of the palace's security, but I wasn't complaining. Surely a wine barrel would weigh a little differently the than a... The storeroom uh... was filled with boxes of food and supplies. I guess even the patrician had to eat every now and then. Then a guy. Now that's another little book I reference. I couldn't think of anything useful to do with the boxes. The patrician is sort of famously Spartan in the books. He doesn't indulge in uh, vices, things that would dull his mind or cause other people to be able to take advantage of him in some way. He does have a nice palace. That must be said. So it looks like we can go up and to the left, and there's a few doors to I investigate. I guess they didn't have an open door policy. Well, in an unfamiliar situation, obviously I think our first step should be to werewolf. Nothing really notable, I, I don't see. I guess they didn't have an open door policy. However, silence. Perhaps I should try a different door. In addition to Super Scent, as a werewolf, we've also got access to Super Hear. Talking behind the door. Oh, it's a terrible state. I don't know how he puts up with it. Oh, I know, dear, I know. Just because the prisoners don't mean they shouldn't keep their rooms mm. clean. It's shocking. Absolutely shocking. And those ones that are chained up, they're the worst. They think because they get special treatment, they don't have to tidy up. Nobody thinks of us cleaners, do they, dear? Perish the thought. All in all, it wasn't the most useful conversation I could have overheard. I guess everybody feels put upon in some way or another. And if you're around suffering, then you learn to uh, tone it out in favor of your own minutiae. There's our lesson for the day. Have a heart for those who are in a worse position than you. This message not brought to you by Luton. Oh, there's a scent. The only noticeable scent in the hallway was someone's trail which led to the double doors. That's not our killers, and we've seen Navy before. I could hear what I could only assume was some of the patricians' clerks talking. I do wish people would bear in mind how much paperwork everything is for us. I know just what you mean. Have you seen file A? It's a little Easter egg here. First, he steals a crowbar, 
<laughs> and that's a T1712 form straight away. Exactly. No respect for the Patrician spies and clerks. That's the trouble with this city. Oh, the crowbar's only the start, believe me. I've got two counts of murder. Ha! Huh, that's an F086B just to get the list of forms you need. Tell me about it. And as if that wasn't enough, he's only gone and died. Ah, oh, not another D2317E. I hate those. Worse. A D66 slash 004B. Another murder? Oh, I haven't finished the paperwork from Cypher's death yet. Still, I have to look on the bright side. What's that then? At least he hasn't <coughs> come back from the grave. Oof, I know what you mean. Four Those seconds. undead citizenship forms are the worst. No consideration. That's the trouble. No consideration of us hard-working bureaucrats. The clerks soon return to their paperwork. It's the second Luton lesson is to make sure not to see everything from the uh, point of view of paperwork. Because there's the real double people. doors were more stately than the others leading from the hall. I reckon that it led to the oblong office, the patrician's personal sanctum. Well, I guess the blue could be the patrician. As a wolf, my hearing was dramatically improved. I could recognize one of the voices as Commander Vines. But I Vines. think it's probably Vines. The other voice had the calculating tones of Lord Veterinari, the patrician of Ankh Morpork. Are you any closer to a solution for our mutual problem? No, sir. I've been occupied. Indeed. And what could occupy you? There was a string of copycat killings. I've been trying to solve them. And have you? No. My lead suspect was killed. Hmm. That is very unfortunate. It certainly was for Luton. So there has been no progress in determining who killed Cypher? Not as such. I had been given to understand that this was precisely the situation you were well equipped to handle. I will solve this case, sir. You can count on me. Do you recall what I said the city reminds me of? You said it reminds you of a clock, sir. Indeed. Big wheels and little wheels, all turning at different speeds to keep the machine working. That, after all, is the most important thing. The machine keeps going. You've told me this before. Do you know why it keeps working? Because you want it to keep working? I'm flattered that you think I have such importance. But no, it keeps running because the people believe it will keep running. Faith is a powerful force. There is a point to this, sir? I always have a point. Sometimes it's sharper than others. I'm sorry. Continue. One of my clerks has been found face down in a vat of wine, and that makes it appear as if the administration has lost control. And the administration is me, right? We are all the administration. You do the work, and I take both the credit and the blame. Provided I do not take the blame, I am content. I trust I make myself clear. Perfectly. Suddenly, I could smell oh. blood. Well, we have some more details, so that's always good. It filled up my senses like a night in a forest. Except a night in a forest didn't make me want to tear someone's throat out. I didn't know whether the guard Oops. had cut himself or if I was just developing a healthy bloodlust, like any young werewolf. But I couldn't control myself. The next thing I knew, I was in my office. I had no idea how I got there, how I got my coat out of the palace, or where I'd got a traffic cone from. It had been that sort of night. I was sitting at my desk, thinking over the case, when there was a knock at the door. I understand you've been a busy boy, Luton. It's a busy life when you're a private investigator. Plus, you get to see interesting foreign places and learn a trade. There was a commotion at the palace last night. Perhaps you know about it? What goes on at the palace has nothing to do with me. Indeed it is not. And if for some reason you did take an interest in the palace, I'm sure you would not be so foolish as to be caught breaking into the palace. Of course not. Think I'm suicidal? Strange you should say that. I heard you'd been killed. 
I expect you hear a lot of things that aren't true. I bet someone has to explain <laughs> them to you using very small words. The thing is, the intruder at the palace appears to have been a werewolf. There's a lot of that around this time of year, I understand. Must be the moon. I paid my respects to your grave. Oh, that was nice of you. It was empty. Oh, you know how it is. I get claustrophobic in narrow spaces. So do werewolves, perhaps? I wouldn't know about that. Remember when I said how disappointed I was that I couldn't take you out for free? Oh, that was a very touching sentiment. Well, Lord Vetinari has generously offered to pay for the inhumation of last night's intruder. He has a big heart. It's a shame no one can find it. Was there a point to your visit? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was just passing through. Thought you might benefit from my advice. How generous of you. Well, I'll be on my way. The door's behind you. I can explain how to use it if you want. Watch your steps, Luton. I will be. Well, now we've got the assassin on our tail. I mean, the crowbar on our desk, curiously enough. I could hardly carry the desk around, even if I wanted to. Didn't mean to pick that up. Anyway, now we've got uh, two of the three details sorted out. That's the uh, clerk drowned in a vat of wine, and the university professor who has been poisoned pretty thoroughly. That leaves only one more murderer to investigate, and we'll have the details on all three. And that murder took place at the Merchant's Guild, so I guess we'll go there now. Fancy place. The Merchant's Guild was the youngest of the ankh Morpork guilds, founded in self-defense by the city's traders and shopkeepers, when they realized their role in the grand scheme of things was to be robbed. Robbing fat merchants, it seemed, was a perfectly socially acceptable, even heroic thing to do. Consequently, they weren't the friendliest of guilds either. I wasn't holding out much hope that they'd help me. Well, the other places weren't especially friendly either. either. Usually is when the sun sets. Is everyone in this city a smart Alec? Who's he? He used to be a regular at the Mended Drum. He made a reputation as a know-it-all. Used to be? The Mended Drum is a bad place to use the phrase, no, no. Where did they find his body? The Shades. And the Diesel Gate. His kidney down a well in Dolly's Sisters, I think. Bits of his innards all over the place. Sounds like he had a lot of guts. A little tangent to go on there, but I guess uh, babbling's as good a way to open up the conversation as any. Let's see if he'll just spill the beans. So how did you end up working on the door? Who? Oh, there's only so many good positions to go around. I take it this isn't one of them. Oh, it's not that bad. I get to hear all the interesting news with this job. And has anything interesting happened recently? Oh, yes. Such as? We got a new kettle. Much nicer than the one with the leak that we used to use. You boiled water in a kettle with a hole? Well, we made a lot of steam anyway. It wouldn't stay in the cups, though. And that's the most exciting thing that's happened here. Oh, exciting. If you want exciting, you should see the new color scheme in the coin shaving room. Come on. Someone was murdered. Wasn't that exciting? Oh, sure. Why didn't you mention that? A guild policy. We're not to discuss... The incident with outsiders. Well, that figures. I am interested, I guess, in uh, in coin shaving. That sounds pretty What's shady. What's all this about coin shaving? You haven't heard of coin shaving? No, I didn't even know they grew hair. Well, you take a coin and you carefully shave off some of the gold, which you can then melt down and sell. Easy money. Uh, I think I see a problem with that. Yeah? Well, I didn't think there was any gold in Ankh-Morpork pork dollars. Well, there isn't. And not anymore. We can't have shaved them too much. So what do you use the coin shaving room for? We keep the kettle there. It sets off the new decor superbly. That's why you redecorated it? No. We used to keep the old kettle there. Only all the wallpaper fell down. 
Yeah, he's talking in circles only the or the way a guy uh, standing in in the dry while the person he's talking to is out in the rain can understand. talk. I don't understand. Why is it guild policy not to discuss the murder? Well, as you probably know, we formed the guild to stop the dreadful habit of visiting heroes robbing all the fat merchants. Yeah, I heard that. Ah, oh, yonder lies a fat merchant, they cry, using that special landlord a flagon of your finest ale <coughs> hero talk. <laughs> Let us relieve him of some of his ill-gotten gains. Pon my scallyard. Next thing you know, they've robbed you blind. That's the thanks you get for years of service. Years of service, carefully mixing sand in the sugar and switching the number plates of the donkey carts. Hey, that's a very stilted view. What about all the other top quality bargains we offer? Ah, yes. All those once in a lifetime, never to be repeated, absolutely didn't fall off the back of a cart offers. Exactly. Plus, we keep the economy of the city running. By giving small sums to the less smelly beggars? Annually, yes. You were telling me about guild policy. Ah, yes. Anyway, it was decided that it would be the Merchants Guild's policy to fully further the aims of its members, advertise the civic charms of Ankh Morpork, and beat seven kinds of hell out of anyone with a leather loincloth. Advertise the civic charms of Ankh Morpork? Are you saying you don't like Ankh Morpork? Oh, no. Absolutely not. I heard what you guys did to Castro Aster. Damn straight. He got tired real quick. <laughs> this doesn't explain why you can't discuss the murder with me. Well, the Merchant's Guild is supposed to be the shining beacon that shows the rest of the world how unsurpassably wonderful Ankh Morpork is. By robbing them blind? Oi! Watch it. Sorry. Continue. Anyway, the point is, it's bad publicity if we're seen to have a murder in our ranks. Couldn't you sell it as a tourist attraction? What? You know... Come to Ankh Morpork, site of the infamous counterweight killings. Show some respect. A merchant lies dead, strut down in his prime. So do half a dozen other people. True, but they weren't merchants. I see. Well, they uh, seem pretty intent on keeping the good name of the city up, although that's pretty laughable. So how exactly do you go about advertising the civic charms of Ankh Morpork? We pursue those misguided people who publicly fail to recognize the many attractive points of this fine city. Pursue? Yes. We hire large gangs of men with ears like fists and fists like walnuts to point out that Ankh Morpork is in fact a marvelously clean and decent city in which to live. A process whose ongoing nature might be swiftly curtailed if they don't shut up right now. I suspect they see sense. Oh yes. Even if their eyes are a bit swollen. Yeah, they're extremely hardcore tourist board, basically. Well, all that basically to say, uh, he's probably not going to tell us anything willingly. Still, it doesn't hurt to ask about the killings and the murder. Have you heard about the counterweight killings? Who hasn't? It's the talk of the town. A gruesome serial killer in our own backyard. Ankh Morpork, where major political events are never talked about, but grisly murders are discussed over the dinner table. Hey, if it isn't local news, I'm not interested. Oh, of course. Ten thousand killed in a pogrom in Omnia is irrelevant. But Ankh Morpork man stubs toe on the Maudlin Bridge. Oh, that's news. Someone stubbed their toe <coughs> on the Maudlin Bridge? Never mind. A little political commentary there. Well, let's see if he can say anything in particular. About this merchant that was killed. Sorry, I'm not allowed to discuss the incident with outsiders. A guild policy. It wouldn't hurt to tell me the broad details, would it? It would hurt a lot. No one's going to know. I'd know about hitting the ground. Is it really that important Sorry to you? Sorry about The merchant's there. guild takes its policies very seriously. So it seemed. I had to find a way to explain. Yeah, that. guild policy. You know, he mentioned he's only here working the door because all the other positions are taken. That sounds like a lot, you know, like the way things work up at the university. Maybe we can goad him with I that. I hear little. up at the unseen university, they talk about dead men's pointy boots. Yes, I've heard of that. Really? Yes. They ask no questions about how a wizard's shoes were emptied. Operate the same policy here, do you? What? Hey, what are you implying? Well, you know, here you are, stuck on the door. Then a merchant gets killed, leaving a vacancy in the hierarchy. I did not kill gaming. 
But there aren't any witnesses to that, are there? There aren't any witnesses at all. He was alone in the Guildhouse when... Oops. Thanks for the information. Uh, wait. Uh, don't tell anyone I said anything. Th they'll lynch me. I'll keep quiet if you tell me everything you know. No, I've already said too much. Well, it was good while it lasted. Now all I had to find out was how Gaiman had been killed. And I had a feeling I wasn't going to learn that here. Well, Luton is still the uh, five-time all-regional champion for weaseling information out of people, which we really appreciate in this case. So we now know at least his name and that he was alone when he was killed. Well, goodbye for now. I think that's all the information we're going to be able to wring out of the city before we head over to the Von Überfalls, but uh, I feel a lot better now, armed with this knowledge. We now know a bit more about the murders, how they took place, and so next time we will go see the Count and find out what he knows about the moss and possibly other things. Alright, I'll see you guys then.